This video is a tutorial sheet which gives a number of examples on sketching with asymptotic methods. Now, students are reminded about the purpose of tutorials, which is to give students a number of examples they can use to test their own understanding. And the key word here is test. So what we expect you to do is pause the video after you've read the question and try the question by yourself. Only look at the solutions provided once you've made a proper attempt. Now you're reminded here that the emphasis is on sketching and not plotting. If you really do want an accurate plot, then please use a computer. And we'll also remind you that once you've seen this tutorial sheet, you will see it straightforward to produce a number of your own tutorial examples and use a computer to test your solutions. Now a background, the sorts of things that we're going to use. We're basically looking at factors of the form S plus A, which are changed to J omega plus A for a frequency response curve. And we're saying, can we approximate this factor J omega plus A in different regions of frequency? So the approximations are here. If omega is much less than A over 10, the argument's roughly zero, the gain's roughly A. If omega is A over 10, the argument's about six, and the modulus is about A. If omega equals A, the argument's 45, and the modulus is A root two. If omega equals 10a, the argument's 84, and the modulus is about omega. And if omega is greater than 10a, the argument is 90, and the modulus again is approximately omega. Now in terms of sketching, there's some other quick rules that we've demonstrated. So when you're sketching your boat diagram, then what you'll find is if you're going through a corner frequency, and that frequency is a pole, then you'll see the asymptotes in the game plot change by minus 20 decibels per decade, and the asymptotes in the phase plot change by 90 degrees. If the corner frequency is a zero, then the asymptotes in the game plot change by plus 20 decibels per decade, and in the phase plot by plus 90 degrees. And finally, if the system includes an integrator, you can initialize the game plot by computing the value of the asymptote at the lowest corner frequency. Here's the questions then. You'll see we've given you four transfer functions. We want you to sketch the boat diagrams for these and afterwards check your answers with MATLAB or some other software if you have it. Now, now is the time to pause and we will go through the solutions. So, Question one, g equals four of s, s plus five. So you remember the first thing to do is to put this into its uh, frequency response form. So I'm gonna four over j omega, j omega plus five. And then imagine how do I break up the frequency domain? Well, clearly I've got omega less than five. If omega is less than five, I'll have a gain plot with minus 20 decibels per decade and my phase asymptote will clearly be at minus 90. If I have omega greater than five, my gain plot will be minus 40 decibels per decade, and my phase asymptote will be at minus 180. Now, <coughs> if I want to initialize my gain, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use omega equals five because that's where the corner frequency is. And so what I'm gonna get is modulus of G of J five is approximately, now remember we're using the asymptote approximation. So we get four over five times five, which is 0.16 or minus 16 decibels. Now finally, we might need to correct the phase plot at some point, so we write out the argument of G explicitly. So the argument of G is going to be minus 90 minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 5. So we can do things like at omega equals 5, the argument of G is clearly going to be minus 135. And we can do some easy ones. Omega equals 0.5, the argument of G will be minus 96, and omega equals 
50, the argument of G is going to be minus 174. That's using the sort of 6 degree rules. So hopefully we've got enough information now in order to do our sketches. So what we've done here, because it's difficult to sketch on the screen, I've marked the stars to say what values we've got. Now this value here is marked minus 16 dB at omega equals 5, which we just computed on the previous slide. And the next star is to mark that this is a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. So you mark this first star here, and then you draw a slope to the left at minus 20 decibels per decade. And you can use a ruler to do that. And then after this, you draw another slope, with this, which is at minus 40 decibels per decade. Now we know that because this has just got a single corner frequency, there'll be an offset of about 3 decibels at that corner frequency. So if you want an exact plot, I mean, it's not very easy to do on the screen. It'll be something like that. And you'll notice it's almost the same as the asymptotes anyway. What about the phase asymptotes? Well, in this particular case, what we said was for low frequencies up to 5. So let's just mark the frequencies. So I've got 2, 3, 4, 5. So that line here corresponds to 5. So up to there, the asymptotes were running at minus 90. Once we got to there, the asymptotes moved to minus 180. We knew some core values. So we knew we had minus 135 at the corner frequency. There it is. And we knew we were six, degree, six degrees off if you were distant by a decade. So that means a decade is there, and a decade is there. So you could mark more values if you want, but this should be enough in order to give you a smooth curve, Oops, which is pretty close to what's going to really happen. And that's enough for this question. Right, next one. h equals s plus 2 over s plus 5 squared. So here we have two corner frequencies. So we'll do if omega is less than 2, then you'll see what we've got. If I put gain up here, or gain your gain asymptote, you've got 2 over 25. Or I could actually calculate that if I put it in brackets. That's minus 22 decibels. And your phase is going to be 0. If you've got 2 less than omega, sorry, less than omega less than 5, then you're going to have, that's, you've gone through a 0, so you're going to have plus 20 decibels per decade as the slope and the phase will be 90. And then if omega is bigger than 5, you'll see that there's a double pole. If I mark that over here, can you see there's a square? And so because you've gone through two poles, the slope will go to minus 20 decibels per decade. So a drop of 40 because it's two poles and the phase will go to minus 90. So there's the basic asymptotic information. Next, we might want to correct the phase at some points. So let's write down what the argument of G is. So the argument of G is going to be 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2 minus twice 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 5. Now, we put in a few key values. So we could do argument of G of J2. So that's a frequency at 2. And we're going to get 10 to the minus 1 of 1 minus twice tan to the minus 1 of 0.4, and that's going to give you 1. We could do the argument of g of j5, which is going to be 10 to the minus 1, 2.5, minus 2, tan to the minus 1 of 1, which is going to give you minus 22. And just in case, I'm not going to calculate it explicitly, you can see by inspection that g of j50 which is roughly a decade above the key corner frequency of 5. So you're going to get minus 12 degrees, or a 12 degree offset due to the 5s. Maybe still a little bit from the 2, but not much. So I'm going to say this is going to be approximately minus 80. 
The fact that I might be out by a couple of degree, degrees doesn't matter, but it's going to be of the order of minus 80. Let's move and do the sketches then. So you'll notice again we've put the stars on to help us. So we've said for low frequencies we had minus 20 do decibels. Then we get to the first corner frequency, which I've marked in the wrong place here. It should be here. At a frequency of 2. <coughs> and then we go up at 20 decibels per decade. And probably if I've marked that one in the wrong place, it's going to um, not help. So I'm going to have to uh, estimate. So we've got a frequency of 5. One minute. This is a frequency of 5, but probably the slope will go like that. I do apologise for that silly typo. And then we've got a slope down here. So I'll mark the key information. This has got to be a slope of 20 decibels per decade. And this has got to be a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. And the best way to get this right is just use your ruler. Make sure your ruler is at the correct slope. And then draw the line between the two frequencies. Now, I haven't put any corrections in here and you might want to but it's probably reasonable to sur surmise that the plot's going to do something like this and if you really want to get the plot accurate then you need to do an exact calculation somewhere around here and add it on but in truth it will often be incidental because you'll see the sort of differences we're talking about here two to three decibels are quite small and the scale I've chosen here is quite small. So as soon as you make that scale 60 to 80 decibels, you won't be able to sketch that accurately anyway. Right, next for the phase. Now in the phase, we said we had a phase of zero until we got to two decibels. And then we went up to plus 90. Then we went along to a frequency of five. And then we came down to minus 90 and then along. So there's the asymptotic information. Now we had a few exact values. <coughs> At omega equals 2 we said we had 1 degree. So that's pretty much there as accurately as I can plot it. At omega equals 5 we said we had minus 22. So that's there. And at omega equals 50 we said you're going to be around minus 80. So that's there. So this plot is pretty much going to run along here and then do something like this. And again, you will find in terms of sketching, and I'll emphasize that, our job is to do a sketch, not a plot. This is informative enough to tell us what's going on. Next one then. So m equals 2, s plus 10 over s, s plus 1, s plus 4. So we've got a few more corner frequencies here, so we'll need to be a bit smarter with our graph. So what I'm going to do, or sorry, our table, is actually make it just a little bit neater. So I'm going to put my frequency range, I'm going to put my slope for the game plot, and I'm going to put my phase. So it begins to look quite neat. So I've got omega less than 1, then I've got 1 less than omega less than 4, then I've got 4 less than omega less than 10, and then I've got omega greater than 10. So if omega is less than 1, you'll notice I have this integrator. So my slope is going to be minus 20, and I won't write the decibels per decade. That's implicit. Between 1 and 4, you'll see we've gone through another pole. So it's now a slope of minus 40. Between 4 and 10, we've gone through another pole. So now the slope's down to minus 60. And for omega greater than 10, we've now gone through a 0 back to minus 40. For the phase, these match, so you're going to have minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, minus 180. Now, there's an integrator here, so we need to initialize the gain. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write m is approximately equal to 2 times 10 over omega times 1 times 4. And we're choosing the smallest corner frequency, which is an omega of 1. So what I'm going to do is cross that, and make it 1. And so you've got m of j1 modulus is approximately equal to 20 over 4, which is 5. And this is 14 decibels. 
So that's where you're going to initialize your game plot. Now we need to add a few precise arguments. So I'm going to do something like the argument of g of j1, which is going to be minus 90 from the integrator, minus 10 to the minus 1 of 1 from the s plus 1, minus 10 to the minus 1, 1 over 4 from the s plus 4, plus 10 to the minus 1 of 1 over 10. And if you plug the numbers in, I'll just put it underneath so you can see, this one here is about 14, this one here we know is about 6, this one by inspection is 45, and so what you're going to get is minus 143. Next one, I'm going to do the argument of g of j10, which is a decade separated. So I get minus 90, minus 10 to the minus 1 of 10, minus 10 to the minus 1 of 10 over 4, plus 10 to the minus 1 of 1. And again, I can put some of these values in. This one's a well-known one, which is why I've chosen 10, because I get minus 84. This one is minus 68. And this one is 45. Therefore, we add those together and we get minus 197. So hopefully, those two will be enough to give us a good plot. Now, because you need to sketch slopes and everything, we've done this one for you. And what you'll see is we've put on this point here, which was at minus 14 decibels. And the key thing is to get the slopes right. So this slope was at minus 20 dB per decade. This slope here, between 2 and 4, was at minus 40 dB per decade. Between 4 and 10, this slope is at minus 60 dB per decade. And then finally, the slope goes back to minus 40 dB per decade. But the key thing you'll see is how much difference is there between the red line, which is the exact plot, and the asymptotes. And you'll notice, in terms of your ability to sketch, there's very little difference. Okay? You might say, well, there's a small difference at the corner frequencies, but otherwise, the difference really is within sketching accuracy. And so if you're doing a sketch, it's hardly worth it. What about the asymptotes, then? So again, let's mark the corner frequencies so we don't lose them. We had a 1. We had a 4, and we had a 10. Those were the key corner frequencies. So up to 1, we said we had minus 90 degrees. There we go. And then between 1 and 4, we had minus 180. So that takes us up to 4. Between 4 and 10, we had minus 270. There we go. And after 10, we went back to minus 180. So there's the phase asymptotes. Then we said we know a few exact values. We said at 1, the argument was minus 143. There we go. We said at 10, it's minus 197, which is about there. Now, we can use your standard arguments to say about a decade off 1, you're not going to be far off a 6 degrees. So that's going to be somewhere like that. And ditto, a decade off 10, you're not going to be far off down here. So what you can do is you can now get a smooth sketch which clearly does something like this. Now remember, this is a sketch. We have to keep emphasizing this. It's a sketch. It's not an exact plot. But this is indicative of what you're expecting the Bode diagram to do and it gives you numbers in the right ballpark which is what you need for insight and design. Final example then, p equals 3 over s minus 1, s plus 6. Now this one's a bit more tricky because we've got a right half plane factor. So we have to be slightly more careful. But anyway, let's do our diagram as normal, or sorry, our table as normal. So if omega is less than 1, which is the first corner frequency, then you're going to have a gain of 3 over 6, which is 0 0.5, or minus 6 decibels. So remember, gain is about modulus, um, so the signs disappear. And the phase, now I need to write down exactly what the phase of G is so I can do this. So the argument of G for this particular case is going to be minus, brackets, 180 
minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 6. So that's going to give me minus 180 plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 6. So what I can see is this right half plane pole is going to act a bit like a zero when it comes to the phase characteristic, i.e. I'm going to get a phase shift up when I go through the pole, but I've got a minus 180 to start with. So the initial phase is going to be minus 180, and then when omega, sorry, 1 is less than omega is less than 6, I'll get my minus 20 decibels per decade from the gain, because I've gone through a pole, but the phase is going to end up at minus 90, because you can see I've got this plus sign in the phase argument. And then for omega greater than 6, I'll get minus 40 decibels per decade, and then the phase will go back to minus 180. Now I can add a few explicit values just for completeness. So argument of g of j1 is going to be minus 180, minus 45, minus 10 to the minus 1 of a sixth, which is approximately minus 144. And argument of g of j6 will be minus 180, minus 10 to the minus 1 of 6, minus 10 to the minus 1 sorry, that's plus 10 to the minus 1 of 6. I'm making some silly errors there. Minus 10 to the minus 1 of 1. And again, that is also approximately minus 1, 4, 4. OK, so let's take these values and let's put them onto the plots. Now, in this case, we put both plots together to keep life easy. So if I start with the slope over the game plot, we said we started at minus 6 decibels and we ran with that up until a frequency of 1. There you can see it's a frequency of 1 there. And then we've got 2, 3, 4, 5. This line here is 6. Let's mark it there, 6. Then up to 6, we ran with a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. Now I'm not going to be able to do this very well on this particular um, screen, so it's something like that. And then after that, we went to the slope with minus 40. So you can use your ruler and make the slopes a bit more precise. So we had minus 20 decibels per decade there, and minus 40 decibels per decade there. So just use your ruler and make sure your slopes are fairly precise. And you'll see you had roughly a 3 dB drop off there, roughly a 3 dB drop off there. And so that will be your game plot. Hopefully you can do a bit better than me because you can rearrange the paper to write more easily. What about the phase? We said the phase started at minus 180. When you get to 1, the phase asymptotes go up. Now, they're going off the screen here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because we know clearly we're not going to go all the way up. So the phase asymptotes went up to minus 90. But we did mark a couple of explicit points. We said at g of j1, we had minus 144, which is about here. At g of j6, we had minus 144, which is about here. If you step off a decade, then you're going to be around 6 degrees off. OK, something of that order. Not exactly, but remember we're doing a sketch, so let's not worry about being overly precise. So clearly, you're going to get a plot that looks something like that. So there we go. We finished those two plots. Finally then, we've suggested you should use MATLAB to validate your answers. So we will show that very quickly. OK, so first of all, we enter all four transfer functions given in this tutorial sheet. There they are. Next, we're going to use this Bode asymptote plot, which I've written, to show the answers for question one. So there you can see you've got the blue line showing the asymptotes and the red line showing the exact gain. And again over here, you can see the blue line showing the phase asymptotes and the red line showing the exact gain. Next, we'll do H, so we'll just change that and put H in there. 
and show what the H plots look like. And there again, you'll see what we had before. You'll see the game plots, this red curve, but it's not really that much different from the asymptotes, apart from at this corner frequency of 5. And if you really want to, you can do an exact computation there just to get it right. And again, you'll see the phase plot not much different from what we did using very crude sketching. Next, let's look at M. So we'd already shown this one on the left in the uh, solution to M. And this one on the right we didn't show. But you can see, if you look back at the solution that we did, again, the exact sketch is really not much different from what we did. So the sketch has given you all the insight and the useful information you need. And the differences in values are minimal for most of the plot. And finally, let's look at the last one, which was P, the one with the right half plane pole. Oh, I forgot, sorry, Bode asymptote doesn't work with right half plane poles, I just need to do Bode direct. That was a bit careless. There we go, so there's Bode direct, and again, you can see it's got pretty much the shape, the phase plot that we gave, and the game plot. So, we've shown very quickly that you can use MATLAB to validate your solutions. And if you want my file Bode asymptote, you can ask me. And what that does is it sketches the asymptotes as long as the system has only simple factors and right half plane poles and zeros. Otherwise, you can always use Bode M, but obviously that doesn't show the asymptotes.